Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. So we are continuing with the compound shapes. The last one we did was the trapezoid. And if you haven't watched part two, then there's a link in the description. Go and check that out. It will help to see what we did there so that this guide makes more sense. If you did watch part two, you probably already worked out that to get from the trapezoid to the bevel, is just a matter of cloning or duplicating in some way and stacking one on top of the other like this. So what we'll do, we'll just jump back now to where we left off with the trapezoid and I'll take you through the steps to get from A to B. Here we are, this is right where we left off with part two. This is the trapezoid second build. So this one is using two hemispheres, two sides, one is just a duplicate of the other flipped around so that we get this animation. And yeah, we just have the square flipping in in the opening because this is all coming from an After Effects reproduction. You don't have to have that there, of course. In fact, we'll take it away when we look at the next steps. These layers up here, these are just the null controls turned on, so quick reminder, because you know, we're animating in motion, but we're animating to make a template for Final Cut. Well, if you are, then I like to drive the animation through null controls and links rather than directly on the parameters because then we can animate a parameter and still send something through to Final Cut for publishing. Okay, so what we need to do is go from this to the bevel shape. Okay, so as you can see, I've just gotten rid of the null drivers for in and out, so those links are gone. The base without the null now has a natural value of zero. Same for the right side. So now it's just driving from the main null and it will come from zero scale, do the bevel thing, the trapezoid thing, and then out to zero again. So this is where we were before we added the in and out nulls back in part two. Right, from here, what we want to do first is, well, I did use group duplication in the last part. I could have used a clone, I just need to link a few things because of that first. So I'm going to link base right height to the main base there. And I'm going to link the Y anchor point also. And for each side, we'll set the Y natural back to zero. Grab the main base height. We're going to set that to 75. And now uh, you can see that the anchor point has shifted right down there. We want that sitting right there again. So We'll come to properties and grab this and uh, grab the y anchor point, make that minus 37.5. So now this this will be our top half and it's sitting right on zero, as you can see. Okay, from here we just need to we'll clone this time and flip it over. From here, what we want to do now is grab these two groups group them and clone them, but before I do that I want to grab the right base here and link this shear to the main base here. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to grab right and left. We're going to group them once. I'm going to call that source and then I'm going to group one more time. Drop source in the group. Call this the clone group and K to clone. So you see the clone sits in the same spot with the same anchor point there. So to flip it down, we're just going to grab the Y scale there and hit minus 100. And that's all there is to it to go from the trapezoid shape to the bevel. But we want now with this new form to make the shear a bit deeper. So I'll come in here to this group to the main base and at this final keyframe here let's make it minus 35 and on the way out maybe we want that to hit 35 2 Okay, that is looking a bit more in proportion. So we want to jump over to this side, minus 35, and that keyframe to minus 35. Sorry. What have I done? 35 minus 35 minus 35, 35. Okay, there we go. Right, now a quick look at publishing. So we still have the, the link through the main null there. And we have height, but from the trapezoid, height is from the y scale and this is the result when we use that parameter publish there that might not be the look you want for the trapezoid uh, for the bevel so in that case remember we made this source and then we made a clone from that source well we made source group clone group clone layer that's so that we can grab the source group publish this scale to give a different way to adjust the height. It depends what you're comfortable with, what you want in your template. But it's just to show you there's a couple of options. Okay, so there you go. That is how we go from the trapezoid shape to the bevel shape. I'm sure you probably figured it out from part two. So we've got one more compound shape in the series, which all comes from the After Effects reproduction. And the next one's going to be this form, but then settling into an S curve instead. And we'll look at how to bring the text in on the S curve as well. I still have a few kinks to iron out in that one. And I'll get to that as soon as I can and hopefully publish by the end of well, within the next few weeks, I hope. Thanks again for coming to check it out. I really appreciate you watching.